So since I don't cover direct-to-video movies on film exaggeration since, well, I don't think that would be fair for that type of show, I just decided to give them their own little segment show, whatever you want to call it. Now I know what you're thinking. Nordy, every single one of your shows is exactly the same. Boom. Now I'm on my bed. Completely different now. So I've decided to name this little segment show, whatever, NDTV, which stands for Nordy's Direct-to-Video. Yeah, it's not that creative, but neither are the sh titles for the rest of my shows, so. Mostly in this show, we will be looking at rip-offs, like from The Asylum, or direct-to-video sequels, like from Disney. Today's movie lands in the former category. Not from The Asylum, but a rip-off. Spider's Web A Pigtail is a low-budget animated movie that coincidentally came out the same time as the live-action Charlotte's Web movie in 2006. This is not a video Brinquedo movie. We may see one of those some other time. But this film is brought to us by Spark Plug Entertainment, who have made films entitled A Car's Life and Plan B. And really, that's about it. Now this movie is horrible. Absolutely horrible. But in being so terrible, it has become absolutely hilarious. So I guess you can call this my fun series. But let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into this horrendous piece of pig vomit. So we start at what in the holy hell? We meet a bunch of farm animals, all of them with terrifying bug eyes. Only a few of them are really important. Walter the pig, and Tiffany and Crystal the spiders, who for some reason are ghetto and British. Tiffany, why can't they do this somewhere else? Crystal, oh shh. I am thankful. For what, Walt? For, for everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm thankful for being on this farm that'll eventually sell me off a bacon. They go around saying that what they are thankful for, the horse sounds like he's dying and... Ah! Walter tries to get a French bee to lie about pollinating, but the bee refuses. I am looking wasps. Wasps are dirty and selfish. You waspous bastard. Wow, that was really bad. Shoo, shoo. Fuck. Mater, pal. Did he just say mater, pal? Mater, pal. So mater. Average intelligence. Walter's mom notices the pie she baked. How she baked a pie, I'll never know, but she suspects Walter of eating it. Mom, I almost gave my life protecting the pie. Ah! Oh God, my heart! Here's what happened. Beneath falling leaves, the pie was vulnerable to... No, I'm not going to listen to this little bastard do a rap number. In this rap, he says that a bunch of UFOs came down and, thinking that the pie was an enemy ship, blew it up. Walter's mom doesn't believe him, but of course doesn't call him out on it. Tiffany says that she saw Walter eat it, but of course Walter denies it. I love this horse. Mr. Wigglesworth is his name. He has many pretentious monologues in his short appearance. Why was the cage undisturbed? And would not alien lasers leave blast marks on the pie tin? Moreover, when an extraterrestrial arrives on Earth, he or she will, no doubt, choose to make contact with the most advanced life form. Stretching the truth sometimes helps keep everyone happy. I agree with the pig. Telling the truth all the time will just get you in trouble. Tiffany, I wish my life were as easy as yours. What? Oh, no, 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 no. The pig did not say Tiffany has an easy life. It did! I have all this pressure. And all my sympathy for this character went completely out the window. Oh, did I mention this is a religious film? You can tell by the fact that the villain is a snake, obviously an allegory for the devil. The fuck kind of cell phone sounds like a jackhammer? So hi, I'm Norman Gerard. He has Jew in his name, so he's obviously evil. The snake tells Walter to keep lying, and Walter, in frustration, knocks over a vase that for some reason was outside, and... Do humans exist in this world? Despite the fact that his mother was right there, Walter again lies about breaking it, and the mother does nothing. You are a shitty parent. 
Right now, come inside and let me check your homework. What does a pig need homework for? Okay, this is some alternate universe where humans don't exist and animals are the dominant species. There. Did the dog eat it? <laughs> no, the dog didn't eat my homework. The homework, it ate the dog! I like ping pong too. The homework said with a grin. Spot said, go, shoot! It did not take long. The homework ate Spot quickly. Now I hate ping pong. <laughs> it had a mouth. Why was it using the pages? This isn't like the book from Harry Potter. That's what happened to Henry. <laughs> Your cousin Henry? The homework did not eat Henry. The farmer did. So there are humans in this world? And that will make him much less sense later. Huh? <gasps> Haven't you noticed that your relatives all go missing on Sundays around dinner time? Huh? <coughs> well, that was just cruel. The snake tells Walter that he can take him to Viperoid so that he can become famous. The mother, of course, allows this, proving once and for all that she is the absolute worst parent in the history of ever. The snake drives in his car, how, seeing as he has no arms or legs, is never explained, and that night they stop at a motel where what the fuck is that? Calm down, Lucy! It's dinner time! No! <laughs> Why would they have aliens in this Christian propaganda film about talking animals? And if humans exist in this universe, then how is this motel, clearly normal sized, existing? Calm down, Lucy! No! <laughs> they just recycled the same voice dub. Walter tries to help your nightmare fuel get her granddaughter down, but she refuses. Lucy was always terrified of heights! Then how did she get up there? Poor little dear. Come down. Come down. No. <laughs> Get off this roof. Ah! It'll be okay. Ah! <laughs> that was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. The group goes to check in where we find more creatures that are unidentifiable, but the snake's credit card is declined. Next. I have a reservation, Dr. Pretentious. I got nothing. The group is invited to room with Lucy and her grandmother, and the only rule she gives them is not to turn on the TV. And if I saw a TV with eyes, I wouldn't turn it on either. Of course, the snake does turn it on, and the TV naturally comes to life and starts destroying the place. The group runs out, leaving Lucy and her grandmother to die in the destruction. Our heroes! They get to a gas station, the snake is denied again, and they are forced to steal the gas. Don't worry, Walt, I'll outrun them. Holy shit! These cockroaches don't fuck around! Then Tiffany pretty much defies all laws of physics and literally scares the roaches away by saying boo. You know, Tiffany, if you're supposed to be the voice of reason, why are you getting water out of these situations? Shouldn't he be punished for his actions? They make it to Viperwood and... what the hell? Venom! I've missed you like a phantom limb. <laughs> <laughs> is this the amazing Walt? <laughs> Hi. Walt, everyone is talking about you. Again, how does this city exist if there are humans in this world too? They get Walter a job on stage, but he needs to hold his breath underwater for 20 minutes. I don't care if this is a cartoon about talking animals, that's physically impossible. He blows it, most likely killing an innocent fish, so they try to get on television, which they manage to do by saying he runs marathons. So he gets a job on a game show. We allow a friend to help out! Me? Help? On TV? Wow, Tiffany, you're a total sellout. 
Who's supposed to be the hero again? Is an octopus brown, yellow, pink, or green? Well, actually, they're turquoise. Walter gets the question wrong and starts getting paddled by a racket with fangs, and then this happens. Ah! Oh my god, he's dead! How? While driving, the snake learns that there's a movie position opening, and I think runs over a pedestrian. Walt, I see you're an Olympic gymnast, a black belt in karate, and a world-class swordsman, and you speak Japanese! Huh? Which is important, because the director does not speak English. So this is gonna be like Troll 2? The snake says to just say hi, the Japanese equivalent to yes, whenever the director talks, and then it's time to film. Walter is attacked by a bunch of pogoing robots in one of the worst choreographed fights I've ever seen, and then this happens. Uh oh. <laughs> that was great. That was absolutely amazing. Walter ends up in a hospital, but the snake tells him of a new opportunity. I want to rest now. You guys finish sightseeing, then we'll all go back to the barnyard. I found a bus schedule. When? You were blown up and then were asleep. When did you have time to find a bus schedule? Eventually, Walter agrees to go to his new casting director because, well, he's a fucking idiot. I think I'll wrap barnyard roots. How did that go? Wherever I go, whatever I do, there's one thing I know. I'm from the barnyard. I'm from the barnyard. That was horrible. And since you've all been so patient... There. Now that I got that joke out of the way, let's continue. It turns out the snake is taking him to a slaughterhouse, and I'm wondering if the snake's whole plan was to just kill and eat him, what was the point of trying to make him a star? Wherever I go, whatever I do, there's one thing I know, I'll always be true to my barnyard roots. I'm from the barnyard, I'm hmm. the west, to my barnyard roots, I'm from the barnyard. Some kids say, who cares? Some kids say, forget! I'm from the barnyard! Damn it! So the beast stings the snake right in the neck, and Walter learns that he is actually a wasp. I totally forgot that subplot. The snake loses all feeling in his body and can't answer his phone, so his career is over. And Walter manages to escape. How? We never find out. Walt, when folks start lying, they often don't know when to stop. Yeah, which is why it's better not to lie at all. Shove it down there. Shove it way the fuck down there. Oh, you want to know the really good reason never to lie? Yes, yes! Walt, a liar needs a really good memory. Oh. Like, when you said your mother's pie was cherry, you didn't remember that only the pig who ate the pie would know that. <laughs> remember, kids, it's okay to lie as long as you get your story straight. Back at the barnyard, we see that Tiffany is the new host of the paddle show after the previous host's untimely death. And the first contestant is the assistant snake Venom. If you paste two triangles together, what shape do you get? If you don't know, we'll go on to the next question. I do know. Two triangles together is a circle. A circle? Venom, you are tripping and lying. Go she wasn't lying, she just really is that stupid. Walter learns not to lie, the credits roll with characters not really dancing, just sort of shaking, and we see that the movie is dedicated to the voice of Mr. Wigglesworth, and I become depressed. Well, that was just horrendously bad. But it was funny as hell. Everything about this movie is terrible. The animation, the acting, the characters, the plot, the consistency, everything is horrible. But in being so horrible, it becomes something so hilariously awful. I had a blast watching this movie, and if you want a good movie, look somewhere else. But if you want a fun movie, check this film out. You can find it on YouTube. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.